If you're coming fossil collecting along the Jurassic coast at low tide, especially during the summer holidays, these are the fossil ammonites you can really concentrate on. Here you've got some iron pyrite on the outside of this ammonite. And when you turn it over, there's a beautiful ammonite preserved in the fool's gold. The iron pyrite's heavy, it's fossilized in the fool's gold. And the concentrations of pyrite that you'll see on the beach, they're all heavy, so the sea scours them out into certain pockets where you can find them. So that's a nice ammonite there that I've shown you preserved in pyrite. Also too, you get some lovely ammonites preserved in the calcite. And there is one in that gray layered limestone rock, an ammonite called Promicrocerus, a fossil there from the Jurassic period, found along the Jurassic coast. So also to one that you might find more so anywhere on the beach are these ammonite biscuits, called so because they're very sort of thin and biscuit-like, and they're preserved in the beef rock, the fibrous calcium carbonate, an ammonite biscuit there from the Jurassic marine sediments. So as long as you don't dig in the cliffs and sits, you're allowed to take these fossils, a bit like this oyster shell washed out on the beach, a devil's toenail there from the Jurassic marine sediments. And that would have sat filter feeding on the seafloor all those millions of years ago. And it had that lovely lid that sometimes is fossilized with the creature. Other times you find those lids just on the beach on their own. Fossil wood, monkey puzzle tree, got into the deep sea marine environment, fell to the sea floor and then fossilized. And you find branches of that monkey puzzle tree with cones on at times. Other fossils like these backbones of an ichthyosaur, you can see the vertebra there, the articulated vertebrae, I meant to say. And those came from an ichthyosaur, which grew up to 60 feet, swam as fast as the tuna fish and ate anything that moved back in the Jurassic. From the ichthyosaur too, a bit of bone there, ground down by the attrition of the sand and sea. You can see the blood vessels there filled with white calcite. And that's quite heavy, that bone, when you find it on the beach. A bit of paddle bone there. You can see the sort of limb bone there of an ichthyosaur. And there's the sort of digits um, from the ichthyosaur paddle. You've probably got the ulna there going down to the medium bone there. So that would have been uh, paddle bone from an ichthyosaur. Lovely little fossil finds on the beach, washed out by the sea's action, out of the mudslides onto the beach. And there is a lovely ichthyosaur rostrum with the gnarled teeth there in that jaw. Um, you can see just there, ground by the sea's actions, a strong looking bit of rostrum there, fossilized on the beach. I found that a while back. And also too from the ichthyosaur, a coprolite, the poo of the ichthyosaur, its last meal was a dipedium fish you can see those scales wrapped up in that coprolite from the Jurassic sediments. Washed out onto the beach, found at low tide in a rock pool. And other fossils you can find out on the beach are the calcite ammonites, like I showed you earlier, and also to the belemnites. So the guard of the sea creature, the belemnite there, and you can see the tail end there of that sea creature, a belemnite from the Jurassic. And you find a lot of those on the beach, Those guards of that sea creature. I'll just turn it over and show you the pointed tip there of that belemnite and you'll find quite a lot in certain pockets on the beach. Those washing out daily you find those and then from the beach area too a piece of crinoid ground down by the sea's actions. We're more closely related to those than we are jellyfish. Those are some crinoid stems there, part of a little crinoid cup, and some of the ways of spotting them are there in the layers. You can see on the beach, when they are washed down in the mudslides, you can see those little thin lenses sticking out like that. Take them out of the mud slides and wash them up. Sometimes you have these beautiful bits of the crinoid cup or stems of the crinoid washing out onto the shoreline. A fossil ammonite there, still with some lovely coloration left on the outside of the shell there, the nacre, you can see that color there. And that's a rarer find to make on the beach. And then also too, from the, the Cretaceous age, a fossil sea urchin there, a micruster heart shaped sea urchin. Those are just found in the shingle on the beach. And also a lovely sponge there, would have sat up on the reef like so, a fossil sponge. And that is fossilized from the Cretaceous period and those aren't that rare. You find a few of those on the beach as you walk along. And then some other bits that look like fossils, but aren't. There is a bit of the beef rock 
and that looks a bit like a tooth but it's just the conal structure in the beef rock and there are some bits of beef almost a bit like a vertebra there the beef rock uh, the way it's formed so like i said beef rock and then these pyrite ammonites that you find if you're really lucky doing a bit of sieving work on the beach these are the real thing an ammonite there called promicrocerus but here is a plastic model of the ammonite and what it looked like and that was swimming around back in the jurassic period and it jetted out water there with a siphuncle swimming backwards through the sea and had a really sharp beak in between the tentacles a bit like a parrot's beak and those were for grabbing small ichthyosaurs and fish and uh, these models really show the morphology of an ammonite well and i will show you um, the belemnite model too which i put against that nice little fragment of belemnite earlier and that's what these models represent these ancient marine sea creatures ammonites there and the belemnite there so as long as you don't dig in the cliffs and situ like i have said these fossils you find along the shoreline you're allowed to take and the category one fossils you must register over at Charmouth if you find anything particularly important you have to put that on a database for everyone to see for a period of six months the scientific community can study it and they can have a look and see if your fossil is really important and the fossils that you're looking for especially during the summer months are really quite small the sea's done the work for you washing them into rock pools into gully areas have a look for those and really keep safe stay away from the dangerous cliffs do not go anywhere near the cliffs and i've written a recent article a recent blog on my website all about the cliffs